Hello everyone, welcome to the 225 Q&A test. We've got defense attorney Mr. McCall and because his name has the Mick with the two C's, we're going to uh, put a space in between the two C's when you go to transcribe his name. When it's in all caps, you need a space there. Okay, so it's capital M-C space, capital C-A-L-L. Mr. McCall, capital M-C space, capital C-A-L-L. -L. Now, if his name were, were spoken in the body of the transcript and it's upper and lower case, then you would not need um, a space between the two C's. So it's just when you identify him in all caps. All right, so this is just Q&A with the defense questioning, and this will be at 225. Ready? Did anyone else accompany you on your initial visit or your initial response? No, it was just the two of us. What time did you arrive at the salvage yard? Oh, I believe it was around 4 p.m. What happened when you arrived? What did you do first? Well, there were several roadblocks that we had to pass through, and we finally got to a checkpoint where our names were taken, and then we were directed up to a place where there were some fire trucks and canopies laid out or coming off the fire trucks, and told to look there for the people who were in charge. And we found Bill King and Mark Williams, and they seemed to be the ones to talk to. And they filled us in on what they knew so far, and we were directed down to where the vehicle was. All right, let's start there then. Your first assignment, if you will, when you arrived at the location where the vehicle was found. First of all, describe for us the general area where the SUV was found. Well, it was, it was a auto salvage yard, so there were row after row after row of salvaged vehicles or junked vehicles. They directed us down to a flat area where we drove the van to park, and there was a car crusher nearby. There was also a water, storm water retaining pond nearby, and there was a, a little, sort of a little roadway that went around the pond, and the roadway was lined with vehicles, and in the row of vehicles, there was the bluish green RAV4. All right, describe the vehicle in greater detail for us, would you please? Well, it was a newer looking vehicle. It didn't have any license plates on it. And it was, as it was conveyed to me, it kind of looked like it had been hidden in some way. There was a Rambler hood leaning up against the back end of it. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there and direct your attention to Exhibit 26, which appears to be leaning up against the table. Does that look like the hood that you saw? Yes, it does, that's it. All right, go ahead and continue. There were tree branches and or small trees piled on against it, and there was a cardboard box on the hood. There was a piece of plywood up against one of the front tires and some fence post with, with fencing attached to them and some fire, or excuse me, wire fencing leaned up against the vehicle as well. All of the other vehicles in the area looked older than this one. This one looked like the newest of the bunch, and they didn't have things leaned up against them. They had trees and brush growing around them, but there was nothing put around them. Was there anything unusual about the trees or the brush that you observed leaning against the SUV? Well, this was in November, so there weren't any leaves or anything on it, but these trees and brush didn't have any bark on them either, and some of the trees had bits of the roots still coming out of the base of them as if they'd been pulled from the ground rather than sawed off. All right, was the roof of the vehicle covered or obstructed with any items that you recall? Not that I recall, no. All right, now you describe something about the weather. Initially, upon your observation of the, of the vehicle, describe the weather conditions at that point in time. It was overcast and cloudy. When you first approached, was it still daylight? Well, was it dusk? Was it dark? It was going on 4.30 in November, and it wasn't quite dusk, I would think. All right, now at some point, did the weather change that evening? Yes, we didn't. We left that evening around a quarter to 10, and at some point it did pour, and there was quite a lightning storm. All right, when you arrived, was the vehicle covered in a tarp at that particular point? I never saw the vehicle covered in a tarp. Okay, approximately how long were you there before the weather changed to the extent that it began to rain? I believe within an hour of us arriving, it was sort of on and off showers. All right, what plans did you make to secure the vehicle for its ultimate transport? Well, I ask that a trailer be secured to put the vehicle in for transport back to the Madison Laboratory. Now, did that occur immediately or did that involve the passage of some time before it could be arranged to transport the vehicle? It did take some time. They also needed to bring a wrecker truck into the yard to move the vehicle from its position to a place where they could load it onto the trailer. And I believe those two things, the wrecker and the trailer, arrived pretty much simultaneously, maybe an hour and a half or two hours. I am not really sure. 
So your best estimate as to the time that you saw the SUV was loaded onto the wrecker and moved from the scene, about what time was that? I would guess 7.30 to 8. All right, could it have been at a later time? Possibly, yes, I'm not really sure. All right, could it have been as late as 8.30 or 9 that night? Well, I checked the time when we left. I think it was a quarter to 10, so that is a possibility, yes. All right, now, while you were waiting for the arrival of the equipment to secure the vehicle, moving it to Madison, did you have an opportunity to examine, as it were, the SUV more closely? Yes, I did. Can you tell us about the vehicle itself? For instance, you mentioned something about the absence of the license plates. What else did you note about the vehicle? Well, the doors were locked. We couldn't gain access to it. Then we looked through the glass with flashlights to see what we could see inside, and it looked relatively clean inside and there were some minor damage to the vehicle. I believe there was a dent located behind the Rambler hood on the right rear quarter panel, and I believe the left front signal lamp, the plastic that covers that, was cracked and broken. How were you able to determine that the doors of the vehicle were locked? We tried to get in or inside the vehicle, so we tried the doors. All right. So we do have a small word list. We've got Bill King, Bill, capital B-I-L-L, -L, King, capital K-I-N-G, Mark Williams, capital M-A-R-K, Williams, capital W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S, Rambler, capital R-A-M-B-L-E-R, SUV is going to be all caps, capital S, capital U, capital V, no periods. Madison Laboratory, uh, Madison, capital M-A-D-I-S-O-N, Laboratory, capital L-A-B-O-R-A-T-O-R-Y. And that concludes our 225 Q&A test. Good luck.